and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. It's no longer news that the last quarter of this year is going to see the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, conduct another off-season election to fill the governorship seats for Edo and Ondo states and has released the timetable to that effect. In keeping with expectations, political parties too have begun to make moves to ensure they're not edged out of the race. This week, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, ended its sale of expression of interest and nomination forms to interested parties, some of whom have made their interests pretty clear beforehand. My guest tonight is one of them. Professor Francis Faduile was once the president of the Nigerian Medical Association and has made very clear his ambition to be governor of Ondo State. But having very little in terms of political pedigree, will he be able to pull off a win among the big names aspiring, one of whom is the current governor of the state? Professor Francis Faduile, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, I know that I have interviewed you before on this program. You were attired differently, maybe because of your profession at the time, and they were strictly on matters concerning health. This time around, you're wearing the logo of a party, and you've said you want to be governor of your state. Why are you so confident that you could, make, you could be the flag bearer of your party? Thank you very much, Maupe. The important thing in life is for you to get yourself prepared. And in getting yourself prepared, you must have taken some position and you must have worked well to the satisfaction of those people you have led. Uh, if you know, if you, if you remember, I have taken positions amongst my peers. Number one, I was secretary NMA in Nondo State. I was at a time president of resident doctors in Lut. At another time, I was consultant uh, chairman in Lasut. And later I became the chairman of all the doctors in Lagos State. And it was because we have done pretty well, mm. to my own view, that all doctors in this country at that time decided to make me their president. And you know, I had 100% support so at this, the voting. So, so, so this is an entirely different kettle of well, fish. This is also, not a contest also, amongst doctors. Also, and I, I'll tell you something, uh, Prof, pro, just a moment. Also, I contested in partisan politics. Exactly. You had contested in partisan politics uh, for the seat of um, Assembly seat Okitipupa, yes. uh, state constituency one, on the same platform of the party which you're... Well, whose logo you're wearing now was ACN at the AC, time. ACN, yes. Now the APC. And you also contested again for House of Representatives. Yes. You didn't get the ticket or you didn't win. Of course, I did not win because these are the peak time of teaching, teaching period in which you want to learn the rope. 2015 okay. is not so far away. Yes. From House of Reps, you've jumped to governor. Yes, because at every instance, I have, to, I have moved. In House of Rep, I was just finishing as the chairman of NMA in Lagos. Between that time and 2018, I became the president of Nigeria Medical Association, leading a professional group as the group of doctors. You know, it's not going to be a tea party. You need to be on your toes and be able to deliver. So all these ones are evidence to show that, yes, you can lead. Yes, you have the administrative acumen. And yes, you have the capacity and the competence. Are there parallels uh, between, you know, how you contest for... Uh, president of the NMA, or, you know, but as chapter president, state president, and you know political office. No, there are no. There is not true that they are parallel. The truth about it is that you want to represent people. You want to tell people what you can do. You want to win their heart. You want to win their vote. The difference is that amongst the professional group, you are talking to a secluded group of people who are perhaps more educated than. What we, are doing, what we are talking about in partisan politics. But my failure at the House of Assembly, mm -hmm. at the House of Rep, has equipped me to be a better person in, in, in relating with those people at that level. And I can tell you, after I left the chairman, uh, the president of Nigeria Medical Association, I became the, uh, the special advisor uh, of health with Mr. Governor. That is an executive cabinet position and gave me another horizon to see how we interrelate and how the executive government, executive arm of the government 
re, uh, does his own activity. So I can say I am a full practical person who has all the requisite knowledge in both the professional association as well as the partisan politics in, uh, to, to lead on those states at this particular time. Well, your party now has ended sale of forms. 15 million naira is what they required. I think 10 million for expression of interest, 14 million for nomination forms. They gave a number of discounts to women and young people between the ages of 25 to, to 40. 40 yes. You don't fall in any of those categories. Yes. So you paid 50 million naira. Yes, certainly if you have to take that action, you must be ready to do all that are required. Yes, I paid. You didn't consider it steep? Well, in, the, in, 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 in anything you want to do in, in life, there are things you want to leave, there are some risks you want to take, there are some decisions you need to make, even in choosing your profession. You have to have different profession, and you choose one, and you, you know that that is the final line you want to take in your life. So in this respect, I believe with the support of my people generally, that it is high time we started directing, redirecting the progress of Ondo State in such a way that it can meet the yearning of the timid population, of youth in Ondo State, as well as the populace. When you say redirecting, what has been missing in the direction of, of um, governance in Ondo State? There are so many things that are not working very well. Number one, I can say in contemporary world today, we are talking about IT and most companies, most institutions that are going at the rate that we expect to be at par with how the world is going on, they have to be IT compliant. But my experience in the last two, three years that I've been in on those data has shown that even within the civil service system, it is still largely paper uh, file passing from one hand to the, and it's making it so cumbersome, making it so difficult. And amongst the entire uh, loop in the, in, the, in the civil service system, the um, 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 uh, on those state uh, uh, internal revenue services was given that opportunity to do IT uh, system into their, into their activity and come and see the result. The result is super. So what we want to do is, one of those things we want to do is to ensure that we make a lot of IT incursion into our activity in such a way that we can work within a short period of time and we can work anywhere in the world. And that is one of those things that we have, we have gained from COVID, a uh, pandemic in the, uh, that came uh, some two years or three years ago. So one of the things we want to do is to make IT compliant. Again, the way we relate today when we are talking about agriculture, we are still far away from mechanized agriculture. We must also look at ways to make agriculture more mechanized, to look more into how we can feed ourselves, improving the seeds, improving, improving the yield, and making things much more comfortable for the people. You see, you have to plan all this. It is nothing that, is, 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 is nothing that you want to wish for. It is meticulous planning, and it is not the analog way in which you want to go about it. I can also tell you one it's one very important thing that we have failed to do is to plan for future. And I can tell you today, our Android phones, our computer set, our land, our handset, uh, our palm top, even our electronics, all of them has, have this what we call hardware. And this hardware are made from silicon. Silicon is an important part in which it is made. And do you know that? The South Senatorial District has silica, where silicon can be uh, exploited. And this silica, uh, this silica in the work of that area is about the best quality in the entire West African region. And that was the silica that they made to, 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 to produce the first sheet glass in entire West Africa. Though that industry has gone more bond, but we need to find a way of using those high quality silica to help ourselves in getting IT. And if you can get this hardware, we have little to do to add, so that we can add the software and we can be producing computers. Well, I know that Ondo State is richly blessed in mineral resources. We are told that it has one of the largest deposits in the world of bitumen. Um, and there have been talk as to how it can be exploited, but it's 
a long journey, you know, into getting, you know, it to be able to explore its resources. And there are many reasons for that. But I, I wanted to ask you, you know, whether you think, because you still have a long way to go before you begin to really talk about what it is you want to do for the people of Ondo State. You have to get the ticket first. That's true. And you have to be able to convince your own uh, inner party circle, your party members, that you're the person that, you know, should be... Uh, you like to given the, the, the flag to carry for the party. How do you intend to do that? Well, thank you very much. All I have, I have gone around uh, the 18 local governments, uh, except uh, some few local governments. And what I have told them is that for every man who is ready, you must see the antecedents. Okay? You're not seeing the antecedents of the current governor of the state who has served as deputy governor I, to the governor that you the served. The same time he served as deputy governor, I was also in the cabinet. And that's what so I'm saying. It means that we have almost equal same experience. He was working as a cabinet member, as deputy governor. I was working as a special advisor in the same cabinet. Okay, that is one experience. Yeah, but the special advisor is a step lower to the deputy governor because the deputy governor fills in as governor and he, he had many occasions to fill in as governor. Well, I want to agree that with you on that, but you know that it is when the governor is not around that the deputy fits in. Indeed. So once, once the governor is around, what happens to the deputy? Special advisor has his own hands filled with his own duty. But that is as it is, a deputy governor is higher in ranking to a special advisor. However, when we are talking of duties, the duty of A or B may not have relationship with that position or that ranking, okay? And I may put that what were given to me under uh, the cabinet, we were able to make a major difference in the life of people. I was, I was, to, I was to, to pretend over the comprehensive health insurance in this state. I was also superintending over the University of Medical uh, Science in the hospital. And there are some major, major milestones that we achieved during my time. So I think the first thing you want to see is the antecedents. If I have that antecedent, yes. Again, as a person, what have I done with myself? I have not only become a doctor, I have also veered into other lines to tap more experience. Mm. I have a master's in business administration. I have a master's in cell biology and genetics. I've also gone around the world getting some certificates here and there. I was in UK. I have a diploma in forensic human identification. I had some studies in Australia. So I studies also. Yeah, in, but you know, this is... All this one will make you a complete man. You are not having a view of one particular area. These are the antecedents we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Again, as a lecturer... Which I'm sure your, your, content, your fellow uh, doctors saw when they you know, decided to make you president of the Nigerian Medical Association. I but this so. is a different kettle of fish. This is administration politics. Administration is administration. This is government. Leading people is leading people. We don't have two-headed people outside and two-headed and uh, one-head person mm -hmm. in... The medical so profession. the point I'm trying to make is that right now, the person who, I mean, the, the, the deputy governor is the current governor of the state. In, in terms of experience, he could always argue that he's got, you know, more experience than you. He's currently wearing the shoes as we speak, and he's got more than enough time for practice, if, if this is about theory and practicals, uh, you know, to be able to show what he can do in the next four years. The point I'm trying to make is how do you intend to convince the people otherwise, given the fact that he is in the same race with you? Yes, I, I, have, I, I think I have tried to answer, the, answer your question. Mm -hmm. The question, the answer is simple. He had experience as a deputy governor. I had experience as special advisor in the same cabinet. That is number one. Now he's standing in, he's sitting as the current governor mm -hmm. in the last 100 days. So that experience cannot be made to be too big. He has that experience. However, you don't look at only that to determine who will be your uh, next, who will rule you in the next four years. You look at other things. The fact that we have a man who has been in, uh, in one particular trade, for example, uh, who is a farmer, he has a lot of experience. But when you have someone who works in a mechanized farming system. You cannot say because 
the, 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 the earlier person has longer period, then he has more experience. We are bringing new things. We are bringing new vision. We are bringing new breadth mm. of life. Do and I can think? tell you, these are things that we have garnered, uh, garnered over the years from our exposure. Generally, well, I find it interesting that you know you have your finger in almost every pie. You certainly have a, I mean, you have an understanding of what it is you intend to do in different sectors. Um, I, I was going to say that should you emerge as, as candidate and maybe you go on to win the not just the ticket now but the seat, it will, it will not be the first time that uh, Ondo State will have a doctor yes. as governor. I mean, very recently we only saw Dr. Olusha Gumimiko, and that was. His profession was very prominent in the policies that he pushed, uh, including a BA, uh, which was geared towards reducing maternal and child mortality in the state. Now, one would have thought that it would have been continued. We, we saw that there was a, let's like say, policy flip flop. Um, why do you think that it is very difficult to continue policies started by predecessors, in spite of the fact that they might be useful or they might be good? What was the controversy? around starting it and then saying to stop and then, you know, say, no, no, we'll go back to that same policy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for this particular one and for our late governor, Arakun Roti Makridolu, we have to give it to him. He did not stop any policy of his predecessor. He actually took them from where he stopped and continued them. But there was some controversy. It yes, I will explain. I will explain for the uh, BA maternal and uh, child health uh, insurance scheme. We have to give it to him. But the major reason why we have this flip flop in policy is that most times when we develop papers, um, 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 development plans, we tend to make it more like it is for a party, not for the people. So when a party, a, a, a new party comes in, he wants to discount that. And that is very dangerous for development. And we must strengthen our democracy for them to know that when we have those, they should not stop it. However, in this particular one that you are talking, Governor Mimiko did very well. There was a marked reduction in Matana and uh, child mortality. And, and child mortality, but it was not sustainable. You know why? He opened a floodgate for people to come and deliver in on those states. And we have people coming from the surrounding states in large number because you are not going to pay. They are going to take care of your delivery. They are going to take care of your children. So it's, it's over the years we will not be able to take care of the large number of people that are coming into the system. What Akredolu did was now to change it in such a way that it is now an insurance uh, thing. And in insurance, what, we, what he has done was that every person who is to enjoy that insurance policy will have his own percentage to be paid the government will add up. The government added 60%, the individuals or the family pays 40%. But this is different from the vulnerable group that are taken care by the National Health Insurance uh, uh, Agent, uh, Authority, as it were, as it, as it's being called now. But what we did was that we need constant pool of money to continue that program. Do you seek help from the federal and government? No, for, the, for insurance, it is part of NHIA. No, what I'm saying is, if, do you think that if you had sought help for the, from the federal government for that scheme, given the fact that it was successful, but it was, you know, sustainability was proven difficult because, uh, you know, states, neighboring states, people were keying in from neighboring states. Do you think it's something that the federal government well, might it, have supported? Well, if the federal government uh, is called into it, they, they will have a big problem with, in their hand because every other state will want to replicate and will be seeking for fund. Then you won't have that but, problem but, anymore. But yes, but, but the federal government, in their wisdom, I was not part of the federal government, may, because the federal government is also complaining about resources. So what we did was to have those people within our state to register. And we have started that contributory health commission. 
and uh, contributory health uh, com commission. And I can tell you by the time I became special advisor on health, we barely have about 30, 38 uh, thousand enrollees. By the time we are living, we have had over 160,000 enrollees. And we were about getting the artisans, the uh, market women to come and enroll because we give them different packages and they can enjoy this. But the, those one that is for the vulnerable group is still on and they have to be registered within the state. So there was a little change in uh, operation, but it is not as if it was totally... Uh, uh, is this uh, something you intend to keep? Certainly, we are going to improve upon it. We are going to improve upon it because universal health coverage has every success in health insurance. We are going to extend health insurance to ensure that nothing less than 70 to 80% of Ondo state citizens are enrolled in health insurance. And once health insurance in, is in place, all this jackpot syndrome will have gone because we have enough pool to take care of our doctors, to take care of our nurses, and to get equipment and to make things work within the hospital. These so, are the things we are going to work on in terms of health for our people. Three weeks to primaries. Um, it's still not clear what method your party is going to adopt. You have said whatever it is your party adopts, be it direct or indirect primaries, you will support the party. Is that correct? That is true. And But you certainly know that a lot of money is going to be needed. You have also argued that people are the greatest resources that you need. But at the end of the day, we know when it comes to the brass tax, money is going to be certainly involved. Um, how optimistic are you that this process can be made transparent? What would you really prefer to ensure that everybody has a level playing field, whether they are the sitting governor, whether they are commission, former commissioners, whether they are senators, all of whom are also going to be in the same race with you. What do you think will make you feel most assured that indeed your party has provided a level playing field for all contestants? I want to disemphasize money or buying of uh, votes, but it's very difficult. Do you see However, that happening? I, I, I doubt it. However, what we have done with our campaign is to let people know that anybody who gives you money Anybody who buys you as a commodity, just know that once you have bought something as a commodity, you can dispense with it the way you like. And I always make this example. If you go to the market and you buy salt, you can decide to go to your house, pour the salt on the ground, and start working on it. Nobody can take you, uh, they, uh, take, uh, they can, can criticize you for that because you have purchased it. People should not make themselves commodity. And I think, I believe people are now more aware that look, anybody who comes, who was not, who, who did not come to meet them six months ago, seven months ago, smiling at them, giving them money, and now suddenly because he needed something from you, that that person is actually going there to go and steal your money, to go and steal your commonwealth, and it's not going to be beneficial to us. So that is what we are preaching. We have a lot of people who believed in that. We are hoping and believing that, yes, we can have that re revolution. But for you to say that we are not going to spend money in politics, yes, you have to spend money. It depends on how much you want to spend and the reason why you want to spend those money. Well, we'll certainly will be catching up with you when the, prance, when the primaries eventually come up. Professor Francis Fadili, thank you for coming on Hard Copy and all the best. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. I will certainly come back here to come and do the uh, victory uh, interview. Well, we'll see about that. Well, that's the program tonight. But as always, please tell us what you think of our conversation. The handles to use are on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Mao Kwe Yusuf. Good night.